Uh, I'm Dr. Karan Kapoor, uh, physiotherapist uh, from Healing Hospital, Chandigarh. Uh, it's been like uh, 12 years of my clinical practice and uh, I've, I've been witness to uh, witness to this specific problem of posture. So I can't say it a problem, but uh, many, many people are coming over and uh, talking to me and asking me about the good posture, bad posture, if uh, I'm in the right posture or not. So, and um, and again, throughout this, this my entire clinical practice, um, I've been I've been looking towards patients' posture, their their attitudes, and the way how they stand, they walk, all those things. And from from this all uh, entire journey, what whatever opinion I have made, I'll be sharing with that. So um, when we talk about a posture, basically a, a thing which comes to our mind is okay, sit sit upright. Something which your parents might have told you, sit straight, sit upright. Um, and and even we also see the same thing like the ear lobes above the shoulder, shoulder above the pelvis, and the pelvis again above the heel. So this is a way how we actually see a good posture, or we understand it's a good posture. And uh, this is like a static posture. What what uh, I can I can see, and what in physiotherapy what we see is not only the static posture. It's also one is called as the dynamic posture. So uh, the time when you're walking, the time when you are when you are. Uh, climb, climbing up the stairs, coming down, bending forward, sitting, sit to stand, everything have its own posture. And uh, another clear view, if we, if we talk about all these kind of uh, dynamic postures, there there is something which we call as motor controls. If you are doing in a normal fashion or there is some impairments. If there is some impairments, definitely we come into the play and we have to see what kind of impairment is this, what kind of uh, disability the person is having. is pain the disability for which the person has changed his posture or something which has already been there uh, in the posture and that has developed a pain. As per uh, evidences which, which suggest there are very less approaches which suggest that uh, posture is predictor of pain. Hmm? So let, let me just explain everything how, how we go. There are many factors which uh, with develops a posture. One, if we see to the definition also, if we, if we see like how, how posture is, is actually made, it's the brain basically. Brain acts like a master computer and it gets stimulus from its surroundings uh, and then it perceives the same information towards the muscle and then they develop a posture. So this is while standing, while dynamic, any movement, any movement, this is being changed by our brain only and definitely the brain is getting some stimulus from the surroundings so these all stimulus like brain is develop uh, brain is getting these two uh, parts from where the brain is getting the stimulus one is from the feet are they aligned to the ground second is by our eyes is our eyes like aligned uh, in the horizon like that's such a way how we see uh, and and definitely after that only the brain brain sees and perceives the information and uh, transfer it to the same muscles and how our body is in the space is being aligned by the brain. Fine. So after this thing, after after this thing, if we, if we talk more about brain and, and holding, brain is holding the posture. So uh, there are many other things, our emotions. Um, obviously in, in, a, in a depressed position, no one can attain such kind of posture. No one can be upright. No one can be straight in a depressed position. No one can show that because if we show that kind of posture, you are no more a depressed person. Huh? Then coming over further things, there are some other mechanical things like as, as I'm telling you, if the feet are not aligned with the ground, yes, brain is sending the signal. There is some pain. There is some changes and definitely there is a compensation accordingly and you get another posture of it. So if you are getting any posture due to some pain, due to a fear of pain, maybe I can say that way, then we need to see that way. Okay, so if if we go, if we go in 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 a way like a person is, is just normal walking and having having a pain in in the heels, maybe maybe the right heel, obviously the brain will, will give a signal like please compensate. Don't put more weight on the right heel. And this is um, uh, 
this is an um, uh, involuntary action. It's it's not done voluntarily. It's an involuntary action, just a reflex towards the uh, towards the heel pain. It's it's a uh, it's a response from the brain again. So definitely, the person is putting more weight onto the other side. That's a compensatory mechanism. Now, if we see that compensatory mechanism, obviously the left leg is taking up too much of weight. The entire component of the left side will be over engaged, overused. If we see such kind of positions and posture, the client is there are more chances of the client complaining of knee pains, back pains over to the other side, or maybe same heel pains, but over to the other side. There are more chances of it. These are all what we call as compensatory mechanism or, or changes due to fear, due to pain, or any other things. Coming further, if we talk next um, uh, next aspects, what, what determine a posture is, as we have already told you, emotions also play an important role. So if you are happy, you are in another posture. You are definitely, you are excited. You are, you are kind of, so you are, you are more, more into, um, more into a position where, where you're holding, uh, holding your back more upright. And if I say this, this corrected position, holding it for a longer time, and and if I suggest to you that this even this position, I, I won't say it's it's a wrong position, but yes, if you hold this position for a longer time, it it is gonna happen that you are wearing wearing and tear of of the back extensors, back muscles of our uh, of our body is again under overuse, and then uh, uh, sooner or later compressive forces are never good. Like you'll you'll get a pain or you might. You might receive any kind of discomfort later on and body is such a such a kind it's not important that you'll definitely get a pain it's it's not important but if you can see that there is some malalignment there is some malalignment definitely that's the time when you meet someone rather than waiting for the pain to come over and then going to a physician or a posture analysis or a, or a doctor or a physiotherapist so okay um before uh, leading up further i i have some piece of more information to be shared upon i just got an query okay so the query is hi doctor i am a new mother and feeding my baby and i got severe pain in my upper right back shoulder what is the right posture for feeding okay so this is one um one one activity where uh, where you can you can uh, say that you are having pain and you are thinking that might be the posture is is the reason for pain okay so and you are asking me a right feeding uh, posture look you are staying in one position definitely that is generating more of pressure in one area one muscle group is is practically being used more so it is very um, very clear that you might feel some discomfort or maybe pain in that specific zone idea is if you if you ask me what a correct posture is be more relaxed with it and try to keep on changing changing your position changing your posture maybe you can sit then you can lie down on one position so these things could be taken care of if still not things that doesn't get better definitely you need to see a physio or maybe some other things or maybe the muscles from your previous activity or some other activity which you might be doing these days also is um, leading a major uh, stress towards that area and feeding can be an um, an additional thing uh, which is like flaring up that muscle group and you're feeling a discomfort or a pain over that area uh, i hope that makes some uh, something clear with your uh, problem right now fine moving on to another there is one more uh, query uh, that's by raman preet that is sir what is wrong with slouch position yes of course it's it's very um, most of the time we have seen like a person who is sitting in a in a slouchy position and uh, parents or or teachers or or anyone who sees um, that kind of slouch position comes over and and tells you uh, come on this is not a gr good position this is a very wrong post posture and you need to uh, get it corrected so um what what happens in a slouch position how you can correct it uh, the the way or the cue is uh, by the parents or the teacher is not 
to ask the person to get straighted because if you if you say that if you say that the slouch position might get corrected in in your in your virtual aspect but from where the correction is to be done for that slouch position might not be uh, actually happening so um, I'll, I'll, I'll just explain you again we are again we are we are kind of um, primitive uh, humans and all uh, we have a tailbone okay so there's a position in which in which you say uh, one is slouching down and the tailbone is down your weight if you are pressing down your if you, if you are pressing the tailbone down your weight down your pelvis and then you are sitting and that's a complete c shaped of the spine so throughout that position you are giving a stretch over your spine stretch is good no doubt but stretch is good up to a limit 20 seconds 30 seconds we go up till uh, say 90 seconds okay after 20 30 seconds the stretch is meaningless it's it's not helping and rather if you are stretching it more then it, it's of a different uh, like it is going to lead up to different problem so what best you can the the cue which you can give to that person who's slouching that way and pressing down the tailbone with his or her body weight is just ask her to get the tailbone out if the person understands that that getting out the tailbone won't put any weight on that uh, the entire it won't stretch the spine so much and once the tailbone is out the, the spine will come to its normal s shaped and the bones the vertebra will stack one above another and the, 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 he will he like again the person's brain will perceive and and a sense of information that would suggest that this is more comfortable position and i am not having any pressure the brain will read it and definitely the next time he or she would say the same thing this might take like two weeks three weeks or maybe more than that but this is just the learning of the brain so we have to explain or we have to show the brain what is a good position and what is the wrong position again coming over to the same aspect as i told you if you ask the person if you if you ask the same person to just straighten up and the person straighten up instead from the pelvis and just straighten up from the lower back and like it's not the straightening it's like from slouching and coming up straight like extending yourself then again standing prob like coming up from the uh, from this position to an upright position would be done from the lumbar back lower back sorry so again it is going to generate more pressure over to the lower back instead of correcting the exact position fine so this won't help you this won't help you the cue would be to get your tailbone out that's the way how we see that okay there is one more query from rahul kumar that says that sir can migraine be minimized with posture okay so uh, since migraine and uh, such kind of uh, headaches and all uh, because being a physiotherapist and looking toward posture, I, I work more for uh, uh, musculoskeletal problems and uh, I, I deal with um, cervicogenic headaches and, and things like that. So on, on this specific query, I won't, I won't comment anything as of now because I, I don't have any valid information to share uh, over here for this problem. So I would pass it on. So again, um, uh, I, I just want to add on certain more things which which is important like as i was saying uh, one need to be in um, like uh, one everyone ask about uh, about a good posture and a bad posture and good posture everyone understand that sitting upright um, holding a position um, more more correct more upright is is good i i won't condemn that i i won't say that it's not right it is it is okay it is okay now what what happens in again holding one position for a longer time is one group of muscle get get tired if they get tired they they won't engage uh, so early okay they're going to take for rest time they they need some some relaxation and once they get relaxed definitely they're going to take take up their work and later so so what is to be done exactly is once you are you you, you say that uh, upright position is is okay hold it for a while and then after 10 minutes or 15 minutes change it the the best part would be changing your position unwinding yourself continuously would be a good help unwinding yourself from one specific position 
is is a good help learning a good posture care rather than holding in one position if you say that this is the right position and i'm going to hold this position the entire day while i'm working while i'm working on an office on my laptop or or anyways i'm going to hold my position for this static posture for for throughout the day by the end by 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 the evening the wear and tear will definitely create more of stress induced pains and discomfort over your back and you won't even realize that this was the reason this was the reason why you are having your back pain but of course as i am saying the night rest the night sleep will definitely help you and that's a fact so how how it happens if you are relaxing your muscles the overused muscles again it'll going to send a signal to the brain the brain again perceive an information and respond accordingly and again the muscles which are our receptors will definitely be in a good position now it happens in a way if you don't get a good sleep also i i've been seeing in my practice many a times a person is complaining of low back pain a frequent frequent time of uh, a neck pains and discomfort which which comes and goes there are some days when he or she is better but there are some days when the pain is excruciating or sometime it happens sometime it happen one more thing sometime it happen that uh, uh, like day before yesterday they take an appointment from me because yes of course they have they have enormous pain and by chance i was a bit busy so wasn't able to see them that day or the next day and day after tomorrow when they come to me they were with no pain though they haven't taken any painkiller or so this is what happened in all kind of these muscular problems they get better with rest also if they doesn't get better with rest definitely you seek a medical advice at that time taking a painkiller for such kind of problems is is not so helpful again if you if you take a painkiller you won't feel the pain it it shows that there is no pain and definitely you continue with the same position same taking up same um, same same wrong things wrong uh, wrong stimulus the brain going to take and acts accordingly and definitely the muscles will be tight throughout so i would suggest that in any kind of such muscular pains or uh, such kind of musculoskeletal problems i, I would make it in a more uh, more uh, broader manner like all kind of musculoskeletal problems are not to be dealt with painkillers in acute phase or in subacute phase and would seek a med- like like they can they can approach a physiotherapist directly okay or maybe referred by an orthopedician but painkillers should be like an option when conservative management or such kind of physiotherapy things is not helping okay i have uh, two more queries so there's a query from sahil majan sir what is the proper sitting posture at computer okay uh, sahil uh, again uh, i would i would repeat the same thing which i have been already saying uh, like the past 5 minutes back only i said there is no specific sitting posture at a computer okay understand one thing you are in one position you are using one muscle group that's that's for clear after 10 minutes or 15 minutes that will gonna gonna get tired that won't help you if you continue putting more stress on the same muscle group it'll come up to a position which is gonna lead up to discomforts pains and other problems okay so the best way to deal with this kind of query would be like you con- constantly unwind yourself okay so in any position you are you have to change your position okay uh fine next query is uh, how many times a day should i do neck traction understand neck traction is from my side it's it's not advisable and uh, neck traction like principally neck traction is for stretching part if you talk about stretch yes of course stretching is very helpful and if if you don't take up these kind of modalities these kind of machines for traction and all things if you if you ask about stretchings if you have a sitting job maybe after 15 minutes stretch yourself stretch your arms stretch your legs that's that's helpful that's good okay same uh, like sahil you can also consider from your query also so you can stretch yourself after an interval of 10 minutes 15 minutes whenever you feel like if there is something some important 
things are going around and you can't stand, you can't stretch yourself, doesn't look good. The best thing which you can do is, um, okay, engage your glutes, engage your, engage your butt muscles. Because in my practice, it had happened many a times that uh, a person who is, who is uh, having a sedentary kind of uh, job and, and being sitting uh, like long times, maybe hours or two hours, or maybe more than that in one position for some working and all. So what happens is when, when this stand, it's, most of the time it happens, it, it's difficulty to straighten up yourself. So that, that accounts for a condition called glutes amnesia. So gluteal amnesia is a condition when you are sitting for a longer time and the glutes being not used at that time. And when you, when you try to engage it, when you come from sit to stand, at that time glutes is supposed to be engaged and it has actually forgotten its own way of engaging the muscle. So this happens. And then what happens is again, a compensatory mechanism come into play and hamstrings start getting tightened up. If glutes is not working, yes, of course, you are doing your activity. The body is a very uh, intelligent uh, system and they're going to modify the things. So glute is not taking the way, hamstring going to come into play, hamstring get tightened up. Later, definitely you are developing more problems and then coming over to um, leading up to knee pains, back pains and, and things like that. We can deal up you symptomatically, but if certain aspects of your daily living is hampering you, we can't keep you fit throughout till you make changes in your lifestyle. That's why we say most of these kind of musculoskeletal problems, specifically um, like uh, lower back pains and neck pains are like some people say, and it is definitely, it's very much documented also. It's a lifestyle problem. Okay. So that's like how you do your daily livings, activities, how you work. Okay. So next aspect, if, if I want to clear it off is, is again, Okay, so I just got a query once again. Suffering from cervicogenic headache, what could be the best exercise to get relieved? I have half fright, persistent headache, neck pain, pain beneath the shoulder towards spine. Uh, I work on computer for around 12 to 13 hours a day. Okay, so Mr. Madhav, uh, Look, cervicogenic headaches is is again uh, all what you are telling me about your problem and what I can see in this uh, piece of information what you have shared with me definitely suggest more of work of a computer and uh, I don't know if you uh, if you are following the things which I have already told in my uh, in my video uh, if if you can just uh, browse it properly and go back and listen to it. And just try to do those, those kind of uh, postural things. One, if the symptoms get uh, changed, like maybe better way, hmm, then it's good. Then definitely you understand that that was that was a problem. Like you are doing something wrong in your in your working or uh, or anything wrong in your lifestyle. So might be you are getting because of that. If it doesn't get better, no need to worry. I would suggest you to just have a consultation with me uh, in the same hospital. Okay, let me just observe you once. Let me just examine you, and then we can we can figure out exactly uh, it's a subacutaneous headache or something else is giving you headache. Huh? So, but as of now, I can't share any kind of exercises, uh, unknowing the things. But whatever information I have given you on posture care, that would that might help you because the things which you are telling me is is more of stress induced physical stress. Okay. So since uh, I just uh, told you about physical stress, as uh, we were talking about the emotions, emotions, again, coming over to the mental stress also changes the posture. There is a condition called fibromyalgia. So in fibromyalgia, we say it's a muscular inflammation. So same, same condition, a person having a physical stress, uh, maybe the person has been has been working since morning, eight o'clock, uh, doing all his activities, driving down to office, then sitting on a computer, good like eight nine hours of a job, and then driving back home, 
then then going to a gym and then riding up a bike okay uh, going on a treadmill doing some weight training exercises and every everything is is going on in a very very good position like he been exercising and doing all the things again after a while he he start he start his body, like there are body aches okay take it as the as a way like he he's having pain in in neck upper back as well as the pain is going down towards the lower back also and he's having discomfort in walking now a person is exercising doing his normal activities what's going wrong with it the wrong thing is again if he or she is having any kind of mental stress any kind of physical stress which get increased maybe work related or maybe exercise related he puts like he he takes up or pushes up too much of weight definitely it'll going to increase the pain okay so how these things increase the pain again it's like the mind and the muscle connection it's the communication from the mind and the muscle if the brain is sensitive due to uh, due to the mental stress they are going to uh, give signals to the to the muscles and the muscles going to change it posture would be what what the posture which we can see would be way different okay same if the muscles are being overused they're going to generate the same thing and you're going to feel same pains same the posture would be changed and once these things are relaxed you're going to you're going to feel a difference okay so okay sleeping position for migraine problem okay kuljeet uh, again uh, on this topic these migraine problems and all i'm i'm not the specialist to it so these are different type of headaches and doesn't come under my scope of uh, practice so i would suggest you to seek a proper medical advice maybe you can consult a neurologist for that okay uh, but uh, uh, I, i won't be commenting on this uh, specific uh, part huh so uh, in in wrapping up everything so i w- i would suggest that in in order to make a good mind and body communication things what one can do what what can we what can what what you can take home messages what what i can suggest you would be very important first forget about good posture and bad posture talk about a comfortable posture okay in which the body is idle a good posture is not a one in which you are in a flexed position this is no good posture or if you are in an extended posture i won't say this is also a good posture okay again what is what is a more comfortable position is when you are in a stage of idling when there is no forward bending or when there is no back extensions when you are in an idling position you can definitely sit for a longer time more comfortably but again i would suggest that if you can change this position maybe you can just um, like contract your glutes or maybe you can extend for a while maybe you can stretch or unwind yourself okay these would help you a lot next uh, message would be like tipping off we we call it as tipping off so uh, it is like getting your tailbone off so uh, getting your tailbone off the body weight and when it goes back the spine comes in its normal c shape and that's like the position which won't harm you anyways and next is again getting a good uh, mind and uh, body and mind and muscles uh, communication in a in a better and more relaxed way is good sound sleep definitely it'll going to relax your muscles a much better way if you are uh, like again if you can meditate even that are certain evidences which suggest that it it develops a good mind and body relationship and this is what is required okay so i guess uh, this would be uh, this would be all uh, for the moment and uh, whatever it is uh, i am available in this hospital every day morning 10 to 1 so you can just fix up an appointment with the reception and meet me anytime you have some queries or any problem we are available okay thanks